I'm Justin Davis, and this is Drone Camps RC. <laughs> What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today is extra special because I have a TS215 here. This is also otherwise known as the Wizard TS215 from Isheen. Now a little bit of history and let's go back in time a couple of years. A couple of years ago, Isheen was making quadcopters that I really didn't trust too much as far as the quality and the build construction on these quads coming out of China, uh, particularly from Banga. This is kind of like their flagship brand. And you know me, I'm pretty um, brutal on a lot of my tests. My flight tests go pretty rough. So if I have a cheap quad come in the shop, it really doesn't last long. It takes like one or two bumps, hard hits, and it is done. So you don't want to buy a quad that is not gonna survive the smallest bumps. It's really important that they have quality control coming out of China when they're building these bind and fly setups for you guys. When you get a quad, the worst thing in the world is waiting a month and then it's broke after the first day. So uh, I'm gonna let you know how this one holds up durability wise. We're gonna talk about performance. We're gonna talk about the build quality and then the overall star rating. And we're gonna do that as an honest review today on this video. So what makes this one special is that I have the X Lite version and this one is new on Banggood now. You can pick that up at the link below. You can get it for around, I believe it's a, a little over $300 for everything here, but this is an excellent transmitter and I have been waiting to get one of these for some time now. They're really, really nice. They're portable. They do almost everything that the other transmitters do. They also support OpenTX, which is great because you can go in there and change up your switches, models, and you can update the firmware on this guy. It also supports a micro SD card. We're gonna get into that a little bit later. Right now, we're gonna take this TS215 outside. We'll do some line of sight flying with that 5S battery that came along with it. And then we'll do some FPV and I'll show you how it flies. After that, we'll come back in. We'll take a little closer look under the hood. But in the meantime, please do make a comment during the video to get entered to win the Tiny Hawk giveaway coming up on December 2nd. It's gonna be awesome. We're gonna give away an Emacs Tiny Hawk. If you'd like to support me on Patreon, also to keep the honest reviews coming on the channel, that would also help me keep the lights on in here and uh, keep the reviews coming. So I appreciate it. Let's go outside and do some flying. Here we go. Really precise. Plenty of power with 5S battery for sure. Not the way Ishin used to make quads, for sure. Very predictable, precise. Feels really good on the throttle. Good on the low end, on the high end. The punch out is pretty crazy. About what I was expecting from 5S. Flies really good line of sight. Now I don't see any vibrations. Nice looking quad in the air. All right, let's do some FPV, here we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and get the TS215 in the air. Tracking really, really straight. This is my first battery. Nice yaw snap right there. Feels fairly locked in and I don't feel a lot of vibration. So the tune on this one is a lot better from what I heard on the original Ishin TS215. Not a big favorite out there for a lot of reviewers, but the version two seems to be well dialed in and they took care of a lot of problems that the first one had. So this is a completely different animal than the first version. The frame looks great on this one, and I kind of expected this out of this quad. Everything seems to be really well placed. The capacitors has dual capacitors on the top of the VTX. I had almost perfect video feed coming back to my goggles. Felt really comfy with it. I would almost dial back the rates on the Super 8s just to make it a little softer 
maybe add a little more expo in it but I mean as you guys can see here it's really really flawless and the snap rate look at that just super snappy so if you're gonna get this quad for freestyle it's definitely gonna be perfectly tuned and set up for freestyle if you're gonna race you probably can back it down just a little bit on the rates but man this thing is tracking really really nice doing some inverted flips low to the ground feeling totally comfortable with it y'all feels good do a little power loop there. Back to inverted, back to regular. Pretty sweet. It's feeling really, really good. So I'm liking how loose it is. It does not feel like any other Ishin quad that I've flown before. Plenty of power. The 5S is really probably what sets this apart from some of the other quads that I've flown recently. And the coolest thing about this is that I'm getting over four minutes flight time on this 5S pack, so. If you take it easy on the pack, you'll you'll get four minutes out of it. If you're running it really hard, you'll get three and a half. But the benefit of flying 5S and 6S is that you can get a pretty good amount of flight time if you're running a little lower KV motors. But super quick, super nimble. So it's checking out in the flight test. And I really, I don't have any complaints as far as the flight characteristics go. This is where quads should be right now. It's really competitive out there right now. All the different companies, Diatone, Eshin, Emax, they're all competing to make the best flying quad now and, and actually have a, a real flight tested pid tune on these quads. And, and that's been the problem for the last couple years is that these companies were just kicking out product with the name and not really putting a pid tune on it, leaving it stock beta flight pids. And sometimes you got a quad and every quad is different you get a quad with all these parts that, that look good together, but flies like a dog. So I think this one's flying really good and uh, definitely five stars for the flying capability. But let's go ahead in the studio now. Let's, let's take a little look at the components on this quad and I'll show you what's under the hood and what makes this one tick. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started with the review now. This seems to be a version three. I've seen version one version two and this one does have changes even far back as the uh, version two one that came out like over six to nine months ago so I'm going to show you what those changes are in this review but right away on this box you'll see that there is an x light transmitter included with it now which I love that's super awesome it seems like the perfect transmitter for travel it does say bind and fly on this but it's actually a ready to fly you're gonna have to bind it up to the quad though which is not super hard i'm gonna go ahead and take this top off show you what comes in the box really quickly you get two sets of dow prop cyclones which i really love a lot they give you two colors they give you this blue color and this total clear color here and these are actually what size were these these were 50 5045C Dow Prop Cyclones. Also, some of my favorite props out there. And these run really nice. They're also very, very forgiving. And they do bend back quite easily. You get some extra foam bumpers in here. You get a carbon plate for the bottom of your 5S battery that's also included in this box, which I love that they now include a battery in this one. And this box pretty much has everything you need to fly with the exception of goggles, which I find kind of amazing, uh, and a battery charger, which you will need. You don't get one in this box. So you also get this little bottom rubber 3M mounting plate, and you can put this on, you can peel off these little pieces right here, and all the screws will stick through nicely. And the quad itself, the quad looks really nice. When I first pulled it out of the box, I noticed that it had dual capacitors on the very top right here soldered on both sides that cleans up the video a lot it also has a built-in dvr incorporated into this vtx and this vtx will do up to 800 milliwatt which is super awesome it also includes smart audio which a lot of people want you can go in and change your power settings bands and channels on there or you can do it manually with this little button right here on the side right next to that capacitor and it's two levels, which is really interesting to me. Now, it also has 40 amp ESCs on the outside edges, and those are BL Heli 32s, 
running. You can run DSHOT 1200 on them. Uh, you can also set these up to beep, but it does have a built-in beeper right here, just next to the boot button. Now you will notice that on the very bottom of this, there is a PDB running all the way across. And that was the first thing that I noticed on this quad was that it does have a bottom mount PDB, but it's also the flight controller. So this is a flight controller PDB. Nice that you do have replaceable ESCs. That is a good value because if you need to swap out one ESC, you can. But what troubles me is the flight controller is also seems to be part of the frame. And in the past, when companies have made PDB slash flight controllers that are a part of the frame, they, they do tend to take some flex in the frame. Now, my biggest concern with this design is the fact that if you break this arm off right here and you can see that the bottom plate extends out about as far exactly as far as the bottom of this flight controller PDB. So if this arm snaps off this way or this way, either way, it's going to break your flight controller. So uh, if that does happen, you're going to have to replace this entire flight controller. So that is um, my first concern. And now we're going to talk about some other things. Uh, we'll also talk about some positive things with this quad as well. I won't be totally unfair to it and beat it up too much, but they have done a ton of upgrades on this one. Um, and right away it's, it's mainly with the video system on here. I, I think they had some issues with the video system and they've taken care of that by adding some capacitors on here, some dual capacitors, and they've upgraded the camera as well. The older TS215 that came out, it only had the uh, Ishin branded camera on here. And I'm not a big fan of the Ishin branded cameras. This is a Runcam Swift 2, a very, very nice camera with a one third sensor inside. It's a Sony sensor at 600 TVL and has a 2.3 millimeter lens. So this is a much better camera than on the version one and the version two wizards. And this VTX also is sporting an MMCX connector, which comes out the side right here. And this is my second concern is that this is hanging out on the side right here. I'm not a big fan of side mount. I think they would have done a better job. If you get this quad, what I would suggest you do is just take this off. You're gonna get a full size antenna. Don't use the stubby that came along with it. I'm not a big fan of the stubby. It's a little bit too short for this design. Run it out the back right here and just zip tie it around this main frame right here and have it coming out the back and up like that. It will be a much better setup than this. This might be prone to damage during the crash. Sticking out on the side of a quad is never a good idea. Now my next area of concern for the new guys is how close these wires are soldered to this middle bolt right here. Uh, this little sort of tab right here that this, this washer that this nut is resting on is extremely close to where you're going to have to replace an ESC. If you burn out one of these ESCs or you break it and damage it somehow in a crash, you're going to have to be super careful that you don't make any contact with that washer that these are sitting next to. I mean, that is just a couple millimeters away from disaster. So uh, be very careful if you're replacing these ESCs on this quad. Now, one thing I noticed that they did upgrade on here is they changed the sidewalls for the camera to ABS. And this looks like a molded ABS. It's probably going to be a little bit uh, more rigid. It's not going to have as much flex as the TPU one that came with it before. But this is a pretty nice upgrade and very solid to screw the camera in. And the camera has a lot of protection from the side, although it does stick out a little bit in the front. If you do hit a race gate head on, you might damage this camera. And if you look at the frame from the very top, this frame is inspired by Kebab FPV's floss. It is not an exact clone. It does not have the same arms on here. It doesn't have the same top plate. They are both shaped like this Y shape, but this is just a little bit different. This is a three millimeter top plate with four millimeter replaceable arms on the bottom. And you can choose to use that little sort of a rubber bottom sticker on the bottom if you want for your battery. But I find that a lot of times if I crash, the battery gets ejected off of that type of setup. So I usually use Velcro on the bottom and I have a lot less problems. If your battery ejects, then your video is going to go out and it's sometimes harder to find your quad if you can't use your beeper, unless you have one of those uh, sort of external beepers that will beep no matter 
whether the battery's plugged in or not. But um, you can get one of those from Full Speed RC. He sells them for about ten dollars, and they're they're a nice value for finding your quad if it does become disconnected but it's a nice looking quad overall and i really love the camo design on here it does seem to be a hydro dipped i believe it says hydro printed on the uh the website now one other thing we'll talk about batteries what you can run on this quad safely would be the 5s battery that came along with it and i'll show you that in a minute um the everything on here is rated up to 6s it says um the ESCs actually say 4 to 6S, which I find interesting that the ESCs themselves say 4 to 6S. On the website, it actually says 2 to 5S. Um, so very interesting that the sticker on the ESC is different than what they're saying on the website. Um, I would probably stick to 5S battery on this. You can try 6S, but you're in danger of damaging the flight controller because the flight controller itself is only rated up to 5S. Um, so be very careful with that. They might have upgraded something in here to make that work. Um, the previous versions, I wouldn't try to run 5S on. You might actually um, end up damaging your flight controller. Now the motors on here do look pretty decent. You can see there's nice thick copper coils inside the stator there. Pretty nice magnets, kind of a nice design on the very top of it. And it is Eshane branded and it is a 2306 motor and you do have 2450 KV on here. So it's kind of a mid range KV. I found that these motors are pretty battery hungry. So if you do decide to fly a 5S battery, make sure it's something like a 1500. Uh, a 1300 is going to get you around three minutes flight time, but you will use a lot of power with this power set up here with even a 1500. So uh, if you're racing with this quad, you probably want to race with a 1300. But if you're out freestyling and you want a longer flight time, use the 1500 battery on this power setup. Now it also comes with an XM Plus receiver and they have the receiver antennas coming out the back right here and they're already zip tied and heat shrinked on the back, which I find kind of cool. That's just something that you don't have to do, which is really, really nice just to be able to set this quad down and bind it up with the transmitter, set up your switches and go fly. Um, a really nice addition. You can get way out there with an XM Plus transmitter. You can. This is pretty much a micro full full size, um, full range receiver. So really nice. Now up here on the front of the VTX, like I showed you before, that little button right there, if you long press it, you're going to be able to change bands. An even longer press is going to change power settings. But you can also use your sticks in your X Lite to be able to change these in smart the smart audio option. Uh, very nice because you can also change PID profiles and things like that. You also have the LED readout right here, which is going to show you your bands and channels and your power range. And just above that, you do have a built-in microphone for guys that like to record the quads uh, motors you can do that with this built-in DVR, which is also pretty cool. This VTX is labeled the 870TX version 1.1. Also, if you look inside here, this cable right here, right next to this cable, there's a blank slot right there. And that blank spot is for a little controller for your run cam. You can go in and change the run cam settings. If you wanna change up your scene setting, you can do that. You can also show voltage and things like that, but you have a built-in Betaflight OSD in there. So there's really no need to add any voltage or aircraft name when you can do it right inside Betaflight. And speaking of Betaflight, we have Betaflight 3.2 on here. Uh, it's not the latest version of Betaflight, but it does have dynamic filter on there turned on. They also had motor stop turned on, which I use usually turn off. And another note about Betaflight is inside Betaflight there is a setting and the setting is for your motor idle speed. It's really important that you change that up to about four because the way they had it set up stock, they had it set to one and my back motor, my back left motor was not spinning in sync with the rest of the motors so i was having an issue if you take off like that it will crash the quad so be very sure to change the motor timing to at least four inside beta flight and then you'll get all motors spinning properly when you do arm your quad and it starts air mode now one thing you want to be concerned about when you get this quad if you already own this quad go ahead and take a zip tie and zip tie off your battery 
leads over to the bottom of the quad like this. Make sure it's not pushing on the side, but really flat on the bottom of the arm with a zip tie. And that's gonna keep this battery, if it does eject, from pulling on these two wires directly soldered to your PDB on the bottom. If these tabs break off, it's gonna ruin your flight controller PDB on the bottom, and you're gonna have to replace the whole thing. So uh, very important to zip tie off this cable right here. Now across the very bottom, that was that Omnibus F4 SD flight controller like I was telling you before. If you're going to use the boot button to update this quad, make sure that you do it to uh, flash it to that target. That's the firmware that's gonna go on here. Now, just below that little switch right here for the VTX, you have your uh, smart card option for a black box. Over here, you have your USB port for connecting to Betaflight. And just around this other side right here is where your boot button, your beeper is. But you can take this little tab off and it'll be just a little bit louder. Um, I don't know why they leave these on, but they do that from the factory. And if you want to record your onboard DVR footage, you can put a micro SD card in there. You want to use a class 10 or better, uh, and you will be able to record the onboard video footage, which is a really nice option. Also inside here, I wanted to zoom in nice and close. There is a little platform just underneath that bottom part of the VTX. You can see it kind of sticking up inside there. That is where the floating gyro is. And um, that is why this quad doesn't have a lot of vibration. Other quads in the past that have had similar types of setups to where they had the flight controller incorporated into the frame had major vibration coming from the motors and that was an issue. But they seem to have resolved that by actually kind of having a, a floating gyro which is really interesting and i also took this apart to look at that gyro for you guys to make sure that it was not sitting on a really soft piece of foam other types of flight controls that i've had i always take that soft foam on it uh, off and then i i put a little piece of vhb and make it more of a hard mount and it flies a lot better just a little bit harder because when you make a really hard turn with the quad left or right forward or back if you have a really soft 3m foam the gyro can move just a little bit and it makes the quad twitch violently. So uh, one thing that they did right on this quad. Now let me show you some of the stuff that came along in the box. This is sort of the accessories bundle and the Ishin branded 5S battery that comes along with this. Now this comes with a 5S battery. So this quad is totally ready for 5S. And like I said before, you might be risking your flight controller if you do run it on 6S. Everything else on there is rated up to 6S. Uh, but I did all of my testing on 5S for you guys. And if you don't know it, a resting voltage for 5S is gonna be 18.5 volts. So don't fly it down too much past 18 volt or you'll start to damage the cells in this 5S pack. So uh, be very careful about doing that because this quad will eat up some milliamp really quickly because it is a very powerful quad um, this battery is also rated up to 80 c which is super nice it's pretty much um, what a lot of the batteries are rated at nowadays much less than that and it just doesn't give you quite as good a performance but this is a, a very decent battery uh, and it was getting like i said around four minutes flight time out of that battery it's not bad now it also comes with this sort of tbs clone straight up clone antenna it has the little ishin logo on the very top and um, tbs might not be too happy about these but uh, maybe trappy doesn't really care but this is the stubby version which I don't really like on this quad because it doesn't stand up tall enough. Yeah, it does look cool on the side of it, but the problem is it doesn't have enough clearance, especially if you had an action cam on there, you're gonna be blocking some of your transmission. So uh, this is not the recommended antenna that I would put on this quad. What I would put on there is just get yourself a cheap Amway Cloverleaf antenna. These will get you out there for miles, especially on 800 milliwatt. Um, 800 milliwatt will go a long ways on 5.8 and really this is about a $10 antenna I think they're two for $10 so this is what I would recommend plus it'll make enough clearance above the quad that you don't have any uh, blockage from any different angle which is really nice for your video feed you'll get a much better video reception using this antenna and uh, I'll try to put a link down below for these these are awesome I use also use these on long range wings for 5.8 so um, very nice if you have 800 milliwatt but your XM plus is not going to go as far out as your video feed will go on 800 milliwatt so keep that in mind um, this is sort of a not even a medium range receiver on here so um, keep this one close in and do proximity with that receiver 
you'll also get this little machine gun and this was some extra carbon they had in the factory they decided to make you a keychain to go along with your camo scheme you also have two little carbon fiber wrenches which i don't ever use these things they're not very good and they chip and uh, that's kind of a gimmick there also you get a pack of zip ties which is nice if you had to put a different style receiver on there or you have something else uh, for a radio now these this little flower looking things right here i have no idea what these are if you guys know what these are let me know they have these little holes in the very bottom of them right here and it seems like they will come off yeah and i have no idea what those are you also get some extra hardware which is nice what looks like a motor shaft but it is not a motor shaft you also get a piece of heat shrink two Ishin straps and these Ishin straps are actually pretty decent from what i've seen in the past these are plastic coated ones these hold up a lot better, uh, especially when you're carrying something heavier like this 5S battery. It's much bigger than the 4S 1300s. And it does not have a metal buckle, which I would like to see, but this is a pretty decent battery strap. And it's nice they do give you two, because whenever I go out to the field to fly, occasionally I will break a battery strap and then you're left without one. So they do give you two, which is really nice. Now, speaking of the hardware on this quad, I was fairly impressed with the hardware they put on there. They did actually do recessed hardware on the very top of it, which kind of makes it nice and streamlined. On the bottom, they used the typical hardware. And I've found in the past that some of the Ishin hardware does strip, so be very careful when you're tightening these down. Don't over tighten your bolts because you could strip these. Uh, also, you might want to go around with a driver and just lightly touch all of these bolts and make sure that they're all nice and firmly seated because um, the first time you fly any quad from china you should definitely go over the entire quad with a driver to make sure everything is properly fastened uh, otherwise you might come home missing bolts or even have a motor fly off i have had that happen in the past so just uh, a little pro tip for you guys and in the bottom of the box you get the new fr sky x light transmitter along with this version Super nice little transmitter, and I love that this came in with this because I'm going to use this with my micro brushless as well. This is going to be a great transmitter for your micro brushless. Now, when you get it, when you first get it, it's going to look like this. So you're going to have to go in and choose which mode you want for your throttle. You can see that this is self-centering right here. You don't want that. You want to go in, open this transmitter up on the back, adjust the springs and make this drop down to the bottom for the first time you use this don't try to fly it with it like this this will definitely mess you up out in the field um, and then this side is going to be your roll and pitch options now it does have the same display pretty much the same display as what i've seen on my xm my x7 sitting over there the Tranus x7 very familiar to me so um, you can go in and navigate these you can turn off this blue backlight if you want to it has little tiny switches compared to um, my other switches that i'm used to but this is actually kind of convenient that you have a two position switch here for arming usually i have my mode switch right here this is your three position switch you have the switch over here on this side and i usually use this one for my buzzer and down here you just have an extra switch but it also does have 16 channels on this transmitter which is really really nice and if you push the power button in the middle close to five seconds four to five seconds it turns off and push it and hold it again this just keeps it from powering up inside your bag which is kind of cool all these switch warnings and everything because this is not set up the gimbals feel really really nice on here and they do feel like they have some aluminum inside them you can also hear it kind of sounds metal inside which is really great now if you want to go into your menus you have a little joystick down here and you have two different buttons and uh, it takes you a little time to get used to this but if you press on the stick to the left it'll take you into your radio setup which is really nice you can scroll down all through here you can press this button right here to go back go back again and if we press down it's going to take us into the telemetry telemetry screen and we can go back out if we press to the right and hold it's going to take us into our model screen so uh, you can have so many different models linked up to this transmitter it's awesome so we just go back up to wizard press to the right and it takes you into the model setup now this is where you can go in and select the bind setup so if you push up it's going to take it to the bottom of that menu and you can just go to d16 
go down here to bind. And when you're going to bind this up, go ahead and start the bind process there by pressing down that little joystick and it's going to start the bind process. And you hear that typical beep that the Tyrannus radios do, which is really cool. So when you're done, you can press that button to stop and you want to have your fail safe set to no pulses. Just make sure that you have those set. We're going to go ahead and set that to no pulses. Okay. So that is good to go now. Now we can go back out just by pressing that button down at the very bottom. This little joystick controller looking thing here, it looks like a PlayStation or like an old school Nintendo controller. This is actually where your trims are located. So up, down, trim, left, right, up, down. Pretty fancy little transmitter. And also guys, this did not come with batteries. So one bummer about this, I'll try to put some links down below. You're gonna need 18500 batteries. They're a little bit shorter than your typical 18650. And I got these off of eBay. See how these are branded, EBL. And this one is nice. This is around $20 for two batteries and a charger on Amazon. And this is a lithium ion battery that comes along, uh, well, that does not come along with this remote. So kind of a bummer that um, it was not a true ready to fly, so to speak. You'll need those batteries. They take about two hours to charge up. And these just go on the very bottom, just like this. And by the way, if you're confused on how to put this in a transmitter, these are labeled top and bottom positive and negative right here. On the very bottom of this cap right here, it shows you a negative. So if you're looking for that, that's the way these go in. And you'll do put positive in first right there. And it's a little bit tricky to get these caps on, but just like that and you're ready to go. Now there's a few more features though that I have to show you on this transmitter. You do have some pots up at the very top and you can move those back and forth. If you're controlling some type of gimbal or you wanted to uh, have some different setup on a quad, you can do that. If you had some type of camera gimbal at the very bottom right here is where your micro SD card can go right here, your headphone jack, and you have your smart port over here. And on the very back of the transmitter, this is really, really cool. There is a long range module that can be snapped onto the back of this transmitter. It's called the R9 light. So I'll try to put a link down below for that. You have this little mini module coming off the back with a tiny little antenna that's going to enable you to do long range with this transmitter. Um, I say long range, I would say medium range. Um, it's going to get you out there a good couple miles. Uh, really interesting if you wanted to try a flying a wing with this particular transmitter, you could do that. Uh, so a very versatile transmitter that comes along with this and a Really, really happy that they did a version of this because um, they, they're finally listening to us. Uh, this, this transmitter is so popular in the community right now. This is a really good value that it comes along with it. This alone is around $129 retail value. And you get some FR Sky stickers along with it and a little quick start guide right here that shows you where everything is on here. It shows you the exit button there like I showed you before, the little multifunction joystick the shift button and on the very bottom, like I showed you before, on the bottom of the transmitter, we have some things labeled here, the smart port, USB and the headset jack. Up at the very top is that TF card slot for your micro SD card. Uh, and you can go through this little guide and find out how to bind up your receivers, which is really nice They have all that information. And if you go to FR Sky's website, you can get the full manual for this particular transmitter. Also in the box, which is super, super nice. Check this out. This is the perfect transmitter to just throw in any type of backpack. They give you gimbal covers, which I also find super awesome. That's really nice. So I think Ishin is headed in the right direction. They are definitely listening to the reviews out there and all the customers as well. I've read some of the reviews on Banggood's website and there's some issues that seem to be addressed in this particular version. And uh, this is a completely different animal than the original V1. Uh, even the V2, this is completely different. They've changed a lot here and they've added the X-Lite, which I find awesome. So uh, let's talk about a few star ratings for this particular quad and let's get honest, let's get real about it. Uh, fun factor, 
definitely five out of five five stars on the fun factor because it flies extremely well it's really locked in and it didn't have any type of uh, strange lumber or weird oscillations coming out of a big maneuver i didn't have a whole lot of prop wash which was really interesting that they've tuned out some of the prop wash in this quad so uh, it flies extremely well now durability rating i'm probably going to say about a 3.5 for the durability rating just because i'm worried about these PDB flight controller on the bottom. That's the only thing I really worry about on this entire frame design. Um, maybe they will change that to a standalone flight controller later. I'd like to see that in the version four um, if they decide to do one later next year. I think that would be a great upgrade and a better option for most pilots out there. Uh, as far as an overall rating, I think we're gonna say about a 4.4 out of five stars, um, taking a couple points off for that PDB issue and a few other things. But everything else on there that's been upgraded, they put the capacitors on there now, they put the camera on there. Uh, this is a Runcam Swift 2, like I said. And uh, one other pet peeve of mine is that side mount little antenna MMCX connector right there. I think that could be in a better place off the back maybe, but if you wanted to move that yourself, you could definitely do that. Um, you could even use this same connector. Just make sure it doesn't touch anything here. You also have tons of room. So I'm gonna say for this frame, it is definitely uh, 4.6 out of five for the frame. I also like that there's plenty of room in here. So guys, if you wanna do a run cam split in here, you wanna do a split mini, you could probably mount a run cam split in here, no problem. Plenty of room inside there to be able to run a run cam split and not have to put a GoPro on top, but um, not a whole lot of options for the GoPro. You might be able to find some mounts for floss style quads on Thingiverse if you wanted to print your own TPU mount I'm absolutely sure they're out there. There's a ton of TPU accessories available for floss quads. So uh, with uh, all respect to Kebab FPB for his original design for the floss that they, they sell on the Hyperlite website. But anyway, guys, I appreciate you guys uh, watching my review of the new version 3 of the Wizard TS215. I think it's a pretty cool value. And if it was any more money, I would say probably avoid it. But uh, if you just want to get out there and go fly and not have to worry about a lot of stuff, and you also get awesome props with it. Also, Cyclones are some of my favorites. Um, the 5045 prop is a very, very nice prop and makes it fly awesome. So thanks again for watching, you guys. I'm Justin Davis. This has been the Wizard TS215 version 3 with the X-Lite controller. I'll see you on the next one.